Hey, what's up everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another video. All right. So, uh, I didn't watch a whole lot of that Summer League game, man. I really didn't. I missed the first half of it. And then I had Bible study with the family over the phone in the second half of it. So I caught like very, very small fragments of that thing. And to be honest with you, I was happy that I missed it. I ain't gonna lie. That What I did see was awful. Like, really, really awful, you guys. It was bad, bad. Like, we're talking the team shot like 12% from behind the arc like 26 percent from the field like it was awful really awful um and from what i understand you know Bronny wasn't out there he has some type of knee inflammation which is questionable for me i'm wondering what the hell's going on with Bronny's knee 19 years old having inflammation in the knee or is it what the talking heads are saying it is which is them trying to hide him i don't know man i hope the kid i, I prefer the latter so at least his health would be fine but um yeah, that him having knee issues already at 19, that's a little something to think about. But uh, uh, what else is there to say, man? This team, I did see some good things from uh, Torre. I, I feel great about my pick there. Him being somebody that I told you guys I think will be the gym of our, of our offseason, uh, Emil Torre. He, he looks as good as I thought he was going to do, and he shot a three and made a three out there that I saw. Uh, one of the only threes that we took. We took like 30-something of them. I think we hit like four. It was really bad, man. Um, what else, man? Dalton Connect was like 3 of 13, although he had a nice dunk that I saw a highlight of, a nice steal breakaway type of thing. Laid a ball up, kind of nice little highlight. But ultimately, it was just the Golden State Warriors, who appear to be a good defensive uh, summer league team. That's what it is. They, they held their team they were playing against yesterday to like 30 percent from the field today they held us to 26 so they're a really good defensive team uh for this california classic so it just is what it is man our team is uh not very good summer league team is not very good man and i'm actually very glad i didn't sit there and watch that uh, i had other things better things to do with my time and uh a lot of times when i miss the lakers i, I, I really regret it this is not one of those times man. no uh but Nevertheless, uh, two games in the bag. We got another one coming up, I think, Tuesday maybe against the Miami Heat. We'll get a chance to see Khalil Ware, who had like 21 points, 12 rebounds. It doesn't help when other players are going crazy out there. But like I said, it's, it's not even the real Summer League. It's California Classic. We got the Summer League coming up after that later on next week. So hopefully we can get our team into some type of cohesive uh, – play i've seen us lose summer league games and preseason games and stuff like that and then go on and have a fantastic season so it's not like i read anything into this at all but what i will say is we want dalton connect to look better than he does you know for whatever it's worth it kind of it's kind of a struggle seeing the lottery pick or he is a lottery pick he just wasn't taken there the 17th overall pick struggle like that after what we went through last year with uh, Jalen Hushafino, I think some people are poised for him to play poorly just off the strength of that. But um, you know, I don't, I don't read anything into that. I think he'll be fine. The one thing that I did read into a little bit is just how poor his handle is. He really does not have a handle, and this is not the time to be firing Phil Handy, Laker Nation, when your 17th overall pick appears to have a very poor handle. <laughs> he barely dribbling the ball. It reminds me of Rick Fox back in the day. So he's going to have to work with some, some people to get his handle together and his defense together. But his explosiveness is there. You definitely love seeing him leap off the ground. Uh, like I told you guys a long time ago when we had, I did my homework on him initially, he has sneaky explosiveness. When people say sneaky athleticism, he's a sneaky explosiveness. He can be moving and you look at him and you think he's going to lay the ball up and then he explodes for a two-hand dump like putbacks and stuff like that he really it does play much bigger than he is with his length um and, and driving at the paint i think he's, he could be really fun so between him and emil Torre doing that i think it could put some pressure on the rim i did as i said i didn't see this game but the problem that i saw in the, yesterday's game was that we weren't putting enough pressure on the rim wasn't enough dribble penetration if the lakers are going to try to target somebody i would like for them to target an attachment piece that can do that uh if you don't do a, a, a deal with the Brooklyn Nets, maybe bring back Lonnie Walker or something. We need somebody who can who can be explosive driving at the rim. We need that on our roster this season. So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. Um, what else is there? It was something else. I think uh, LeBron James 
Uh, of course, we took the pay cut. We're very pleased with that. We thank him for that. Uh, he was essentially saying to the media, I think at the end of USA practice today, uh, that it was like being in a relationship. Sometimes you got to do things. Uh, and, and, you know, that's what it is when, you, when it comes to taking a pay cut. I mean, hey, we drafted this kid. So I'd imagine you scratch my back, I scratch yours type of stuff is in place. You know, that's, that's what's in play right now. So I'm not surprised he kept us under the apron. It's in our best interest if we want to be a good team next year and he want to have decent teammates that he leaves some money on the table. So I'm sure he would have been happy to leave more if we could have signed DeRozan or somebody like that. But it wasn't none of those people were willing to take a pay cut. And that's the reality of it. So we live with that. But um, yeah, man, uh, I would love to see the Lakers improve in the summer league so we can have a better taste in our mouth about our players in general um you know we didn't shoot very well today but or we shot awful as heck today but at the end of the day what i want to see personally um i got a chance to see which is dalton connect his explosiveness emil Torre, and his, his ability to, to use his energy to 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 positively affect our team uh diving for steals and stuff like that he's one of those refuse to quit kind of guys when it comes to the steals uh my he, he has a little bit of matter of peace in him in that way where he, he, he's gonna attack you and maybe you're gonna call the foul on him but if you don't he's probably gonna get the ball from you and then you know what i mean diving out of bounds stuff like that so i really like the energy of that player man definitely a fan of his glad he's with us um what else? Henson didn't shoot very well today, but we know how much of a lethal shooter he can be. He showed us that yesterday, so it was just an off night for the entire unit. So what can you say? Uh, throw that, throw the game film away, burn it. If you missed it like I did, you feel great about that. That's the kind of game that was. So I think we ended up losing by like 30 or something like that. It was just crazy. Crazy bad, but um, yeah, man, that's pretty much what I have to say. I thought there were more I wanted to throw into this video, but it's not coming to mind right now. But I do know that the Los Angeles Lakers are still trying to uh, make something happen in the trade market. Uh, I don't think that we need to make a trade right now. I do believe that we should make a trade somewhere before the trade deadline to improve our roster. But if we go into the regular season with the same roster, I don't think it's doom and gloom like most people do. Now, if we go through the trade deadline and don't do anything, that's a whole nother story. Um, and and depending on how bad of a start you have uh, could determine the urgency about making a trade before the trade deadline. But um, I think there's something to be said for continuity. I don't particularly think this team is, has too many holes in it to where you just anticipate and getting off to a slow start because of an incomplete team, sort of like we had before we... Uh, got D'Lo and, 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 and those guys and Rui when our team was incomplete so you can anticipate losing games just off the strength of that uh, two years back that's not that's not where we're at I don't think we're going to have a slow start because of a lack of completion to the roster um, so for me it's like let's just start the season if we don't find the, the trade we want to make right now or if people are trying to lowball us right now let's just call it an off season start the season get some of these guys on the floor and then start trying to see what type of trades will be available to us in October, November, December. Because I just think you're likely to, to be able to move a little better at that point if you're Rob Palenka. I know you got to get to that point and all these fans already, you know, they, they're out there with their pitchforks and all that. But that we have to make a move is not the same as when. You know what I mean? Yes, we do need to make a move. To some degree, I believe it's necessary if we want to reach our highest point. But does that move need to be made right now? Is it imperative that we do so before the start of the season? I definitely believe that the answer is no. It's definitely not. Uh, especially if that means you're going to overpay for something you have no business overpaying for. No, you don't have to do that. Uh, so that's that's the difference. I just don't think many people are looking at it that way. They, they're saying the move needs to be made, and they think that move needs to be made now. And for whatever reason, uh, the conversation hasn't ventured away from that. We need to do it now. It's, yes, it needs to be done. No, it doesn't need to be done now. So if Rob finds something that he loves right now and pulls the trigger on it, I think we'll all be relieved. 
to some degree that 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 is behind us but i think the way the cookie is crumbling right now he's probably not going to find anything he loves right now he probably settle for something right now and as we know things can change and we talk about it all the time in, in, in this channel the nba season can start and suddenly a, a player that you want becomes disgruntled in this situation based on something that's not even possible right now in july you know somebody has a, a locker room issue now all of a sudden he needs to get the hell off this team because he can't get along with homeboy no more now all of a sudden you're in a position to make a move for that player at a lower price now i'm not saying that you're anticipating something like that but throughout the course of the nba season we've seen it plenty of times i think about way back in the day when we got robert ori we traded cedric sabalos for robert ori and then he ended up being a legend for us his situation was off a whim he threw a his a towel at his coach's face in the middle of a basketball game. In fact, I think that coach was Danny Ainge, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> he threw a coach at Danny Ainge's face in the middle of a basketball game, and they fired. They they traded him the next day. Like, <laughs> so that type of stuff is like if you canvassing for an opportunity to get what you need, it may not be open yet for you to get that. That that opportunity may not be available to you right now. But if you let the season start. Let a few things just naturally transpire. You may be able to take the same package you're willing to offer for what it is you're going to settle for today and get twice as much the value tomorrow or during the start of the season. Things always happen in the NBA. Somebody's going to get off to a slow start. Somebody's going to have a disappointing season. Somebody else is going to get hurt somehow. So things happen in the NBA that change the landscape of the trade market. And if you just are patient and you can capitalize on those opportunities when they come and that's ultimately what I'm saying we should have in mind while holding what we have because at the end of the day you definitely overpaying for whatever you're getting today and it may not even be what you expect it to be when you get it here when your season starts you get to see how players are when they're running around you see what type of trends they're on maybe you pick up a player who's on fire whose value is you know too high right now maybe you know some i don't know i'm just saying i'm speaking right now in ways that that you know are, are presumptuous presumptuous as if something could be possible but the point is things always happen in the nba and you definitely uh want to be in a position to have a trade package ready for a unknown opportunity that's essentially all i'm trying to say so yeah man don't 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 feel the urgency right now is what I would tell Rob. If if you don't like what you see, don't make a move. So that's pretty much my thought, man. I got a little bit of a headache, so I'm gonna drink some water, lay it down, maybe take a little bit of a nap. Maybe when we wake up there's a trade or something, of course we'll report on it. But um for now that's pretty much what I gotta say. Hopefully our summer league team looks better in the next game. That's pretty much it. Video forty four. I thank y'all for watching. Bye.